Evening all. Now, I just got done repairing a Lindsay inverter drive type E82EV152S4B. I had bad capacitors in there. Um, they were leaky and low in value. And the switch mode power supply in that drive would not power up. So, whenever you get one of those, change those capacitors out in there. That might fix it. Uh, and here in this next video, we're going to run a motor on that drive that I just got done repairing. Here, uh, there's not too much. <laughs> this looks complicated. Don't worry. It ain't complicated. But here, uh, we have on... The terminal board, a standard I.O. module. There's I.O. modules that plug into this drive. You can have CAN bus, Profi bus, standard I.O., all kinds of modules plug into this drive. But this one right here, I had a standard I.O. module to plug onto that drive. On terminal 9 of that I.O. module, you have 5 volts. This is for the external analog input. Uh, ground 1 is on pin 7. And the analog input is on pin 8. So you put your, uh, oh, I don't know, 2 kilo ohm to 5 kilo ohm potentiometer out here. Have the wiper go to pin 8 and the wings of the potentiometer go to pin 9 and pin 7. Now the, here you have uh, pin 7 again. So you have two pin 7s that are connected together. The optocoupler inputs. You have to join. If you're going to use the internal power supply pin 20 uh, puts out 20 volts DC if you're going to use the internal power supply of that drive you have to connect ground 1 pin 7 to ground 2 pin 39 and I always do that when I get uh, when I have that opportunity I want to use the internal power supply to control these switch inputs. The reason I like to do that is because it tells me that that internal power supply is working. It's putting out 20 volts. You can measure it here. Put your meter on uh, terminal 20 and terminal 7 and you should see around 20 volts DC. Here are the inputs. There's one input that has to be made. That's the control inhibit input. That pulls the drive out of inhibit when you tie pin 20 to pin 28 through this switch right here. Now, these four inputs right here, they're programmable. And I have never, ever, ever had a drive come into the shop <laughs> that, I, that made any kind of sense. <laughs> For instance, on this drive that you're going to look at right here, input number one, when I closed it, it would run, the motor out here would run at 6.5 hertz. So that's probably the jog input. And then I'd open that one up and close E2. This motor would run at 42 hertz. <laughs> and go figure that out. And then I close the E3 input and the motor would run in the clockwise direction. 
and I'd open these up and uh, I'd close E4 and it'd run counterclockwise. Okay, so with the jogs and the preset, E1, I'm figuring E1 is jog, 6.5 hertz, and E2 is a preset uh, a frequency of 42 hertz, and E3 is uh, clockwise and E4 is counterclockwise. But when E1 and E2 were open up, that's your jog and preset, I could run the drive in either uh, clockwise or with E3 closed or counterclockwise with E4 closed. I had full speed control with E1 and E2 open. I had full speed control with the potentiometer. Oh, that's a mouthful right there, isn't it? <laughs> Doggone. Now, every single lengy drive I've ever had come through the shop, I've had to figure out what this E1, E2, E3, and E4 were doing. Every single one has been different. <laughs> Go figure that out. All right. Uh, terminal 62 is an analog output based upon the frequency of the drive. So if, we're, if we have our uh, analog input at zero, the analog output up here would be zero. If our analog input was at full speed, the analog output here on terminal 16, or, or 62, I'm sorry, would be at 10 volts. Uh, you can put you a meter out here shows zero to 10 volts. Uh, down here you have A1 and 59. This is a digital output uh, for drive ready. So you can hook this up and you can tell your, the machine that, that uh, the drive's ready to go. Over here, watch out for this over here. This is the dangerous part. You don't want to get a hold of that. You get a hold of this over here, and uh, you might get hurt. Well, no, no, I take that back. You get a hold of this over here, you will get hurt. <laughs> People, how many times you been shocked? <laughs> I don't want to count how many times I've been shocked. It's amazing I'm still alive. Dog gone. So here I put 380 volts AC three phase into L1, L2, and L3. Up here plus UG and minus UG. That is the bus voltage across of the bus capacitors. And uh, here, let's figure it out. We got 380 volts AC times the square root of two. What is our voltage going to be up here? Pull out your calculator. Can you see that? Let me clear that. 380 volts times the square root of 2. That gives us, up here on these two terminals, 500 37.4 volts DC. Can y'all see that? Now don't be ashamed to pull this calculator out. I'm going to tell you, your fathers, your grandfathers, they used the slide rule. They used trig tables, logarithmic tables. They used those things. And luckily today, we've got calculators. 537 volts DC up here. Don't be touching that. That'll light you up. <laughs> now, here's our motor on UVNW. And BR1 and BR2 are for your brake resistor. I'm not running anything real hard on this drive here, so. I don't have a braking resistor here, regenerative braking resistor. But now T1 and T2, you have to jump that out. That's your motor thermal. If you don't jump this out, you'll get an OH3 alarm. 
and that drive won't run. So I just jump it out with some jumper wire. There you go. Now let's go and run that motor and drive combination right here. Just remember folks, you'll have to experiment with these over here, E1, E2, E3, and E4, jump back to pin 20 on that standard I.O. connector because we don't know what these things are doing in a drive. They're programmable. We only know what Terminal 28 is doing. That's control inhibit. And stay off of this over here. Don't touch that. We want to live to another day. Watch our grandchildren grow up to be one more day older. <laughs> so don't be getting across this over here. That's dangerous over here. All right, folks. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. It's that Lindsay drive I recapped the other day. Got it back together. We're going to look at the output of UV and W when we enable it to run. There's the cooling fan just spun up. Let's get in here. Here's U to V. That looks good. There's U to W. Here's V to W. That all looks good. Now we'll hook up a motor. Power this down, let it sit for a little bit, and I'll hook up the motor. Let's see how it does with the motor. Let's run it up a little bit. That's 22.6 hertz on the display. Twenty-five hertz. 